Hello, my name's Tim and I want to extend a really warm welcome to you. Whether you've been at Vineyard 53 for years or whether you've just clicked onto this video, whatever your background or experience of church, you are really, really welcome with us. And if you are new, I'd love to point you in the direction of our website. There's a little I'm new button to press in the top left hand corner and that'll tell you a little bit about who we are and how you can get plugged in. We are Vineyard 53, we're a church on an adventure seeking transformation in every part of life and inviting people into a relationship with Jesus. And we're just on the precipice of a new year. We're about to step into 2024. And, and as we do that, we want to kind of recommit ourselves to that vision and focus again on God and align ourselves on him. And there are a couple of ways that you can do that as we start this new year. Firstly, we are relaunching our daily Bible reading plan. It's called Bread and it's going to be all about joy in January and February because according to psychologists January can be the most depressing month of the year and we have a better story to tell God gives us joy that the joy of the Lord is our strength we're told to rejoice always and so we're going to read together four letters that Paul one of the early leaders of the the, the early church uh, wrote whilst in prison and they model for us what life might look like content in every circumstance and situation. So we're going to read those. There's just a short reading each day and there's some help about how you might uh, listen to God and hear what he might be saying to you each day um, all through the kind of acronym BREAD, uh, which you can find out all about that by signing up on the website and downloading that. And also in the first 21 days of January, we're going to be joining with other churches from all around the country uh, in the Vineyard Movement in prayer and fasting, saying, God, would your kingdom come and your will be done. And each day there's some prayer pointers. We'll post them on our social media, but you can also download them as well. And um, the download link will have been in the, the weekly email and maybe um, someone will do some magic and you'll be able to download it while I'm talking right now as well, maybe with a QR code or something. Um, those prayer pointers help us to pray about everything from our like neighbourhoods and our communities through to justice issues around the world. They prayer, prayer points about our church and prayer points about God moving in the nations. But for the whole thing, we just want to say, God, let your kingdom come and let your will be done. And we want to start the year by just realigning ourselves to him and recommitting ourselves to him and saying, God, just do what you want to do. So that's two things you can do at the start of this year, um, just to set our attention and our focus on God. Looking a little bit further ahead, Alpha starts at the end of this month. So do be thinking about who you can invite along. The launch parties on the 26th of January. There'll be jazz music, free food, um, a short talk about one of life's big questions and the start of some conversation. Everyone's welcome. There's no pressure to come back afterwards. But Alpha is an amazing tool for helping people to explore faith and life and to actually meet Jesus for the first time. So if you're watching this and you've got questions, it's a great space for you. But also if we think about who are you journeying with? Who might appreciate that space? That's all I've got for now. But next Sunday, we'll be back in the building, 7th of January at 10 a.m. in the morning at Bridge House in Chester for refreshments before we worship together, hear a short talk and make space to, to pray for one another. And then in the evening, 6 p.m., Elder House for Encounter. That's a space which we make to encounter God together. And it'd be great to see you there. Happy New Year for tomorrow. Well, hello and happy Christmas. I think we could say that one last time. Um, we are in that strange moment between Christmas Day and New Year where no one knows what day of the week it is or when the bins get collected. But it's this beautiful time to reflect on the essential stuff in life like what we're living for, what we're building our lives on, what would be the basic ingredients that would lead to well-lived lives in 2024, just round the corner. Now, we can't meet in our normal venue at this time of year at the university. Uh, we had such a good time at Northgate Church last week, that was amazing, but we also felt it would be uh, like right to uh, meet online today and give our Sunday teams and all our leaders who just serve so hard and, and diligently and brilliantly throughout the year uh, a rest on New Year's Eve. So here we are, online, which reminds me of COVID times, which is a little bit unsettling. But as we think about tomorrow, New Year, maybe some of us will be really excited, like we already know something that's coming that's going to be brilliant, a, a wedding or retiring or finishing a course. 
others will be feeling nervous about New Year. Like, what's it going to hold? But I think most of us, we're probably not excited, we're not nervous. The most common reaction I hear when we talk about New Year is, is it here already? Like another New Year? How did that happen? Are we not in 2022? Well, our prayer today is that this could be a little gap, a little moment to ask God, is there anything you want to remind me? Is there anything you want me to take into 2024? And so even as we're listening online, you know, prayer is that this could be a moment to encounter God, to thank him for the past year, but also to highlight something for the future. A verse that has, has jumped out to me this Christmas season from Luke chapter two, and it's, it's Mary's response to everything that's happened. Um, in, in Luke chapter 2, the narrative's really fast. You have a census that's taken. You get Mary and Joseph, they travel. You've got the birth. It all happens. The shepherds visit. It's really fast paced. And then we read this in chapter 2, verse 19. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Now, again, Luke chapter two is a remarkable passage. It highlights the way that Jesus comes into the world. Uh, it highlights that it was this conflict in the Roman Empire that, that's going on. It also highlights the personal complexity of Mary's story. She's dealing with angels visiting and she finds herself pregnant and dealing with the scandal of that, then has to travel in the midst of all that. And there's not a space for Jesus to be born. There's a lot of anxiety in bringing a baby you know into the midst of all that mess and then the shepherds kind of show up unannounced and they're talking about angelic visitations and there's going to be a savior and there's kind of excitement around that but Mary doesn't get swept away with it or Mary's response again is beautiful he says she treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart and that that idea anyway is what I'd love us to do today if we can and, and find some moments even over the next few days the last moments of 2023 the start of 2024 to do this for ourselves firstly to ponder like to ponder the things that we've seen the things that we've been through this year like have we managed to ponder or has it just been too busy um, ponder what's happening in our own hearts like what's happened to our heart this year ponder what God's been wanting to say to us or to our church or to our family in the midst of all the noteworthy events of this last year, in the midst of all the highs and the lows and the anxiety and the busyness, I just want to encourage us to get away and just ponder these things for as long or as little as you can find time. But God, like, what have you been saying to me? What have you been doing in me this year? What have you been trying to speak into my life? What do you want to reveal to me? What are you trying to get my attention about? Uh, how am I getting on, Lord? How's my heart? You see, I think we often learn through that kind of deep reflection and thought and observing, pondering. Second thing that we read in that verse, Mary treasured up these things. Like she had this inner storehouse of experience that she could draw on through the different seasons of the rest of her life. And actually, if you go through Mary's life in the Bible, you'll find that she's like there all the way with Jesus. Mary, Jesus' mother, is in the upper room in Pentecost when the early church starts. Mary, the, the mother of Jesus, like stays faithful to the whole of the mission, the whole of the time. And I think that's in large part because she treasures up the activities of God. It, it like carries her through the complexities and the challenges that she faces over the course of her life and she does face many. So we ponder what God's done and secondly we treasure what God has done. And I wonder again this year have you had moments to think about well, what's he done in your life or done in our life as a church and um, what have we learned about God? Uh, where has he come through? What's he answered in, in our life? What's he done in our lives? What have we seen him do personally? How has he become more real to us this year? 
What are we grateful for? Not always good at being grateful, but what are we grateful for? So just a couple of like really practical things to end this year and start the next. Be to ponder, like to learn, to think, to, to treasure, to see, to delight, to savour, to take in all that God has done. And even if it feels like it's been a really bleak year, and I know for many of us it's been an extremely hard year, but, but I think that if we can see that God was and is still at work and, and his kingdom is on the move, even in the midst of uncertainty, even in the midst of fear or, or grief, or even in the mix, midst of anxiety and questions, even in a year like 2023, our Heavenly Father can help us discover and experience joy and peace and love and hope even in the midst of darkness. God still breaks in and so that's I guess the simple prayer this year as, as we close out that we would ponder and we'd have time to treasure so that as a community as we move into 2024 our hearts could be that little bit more healed up and full and able to recount the things that God has done and, and think about them and ponder and, and treasure them. Maybe there's a verse that God's highlighted through the year or, or would bring to mind even this morning. Maybe there's a prayer that he's answered and we've forgotten about that, but we could begin to treasure that in our hearts. And again, Mary didn't just remember them for a few days. She remembered them for the whole of her life. It, it helped her through the different seasons. Uh, all the way to the upper room at Pentecost. I think we want to be those kinds of people who have this long memory for the goodness of God. So ponder, treasure, that's my invitation to find time to do those things with God. You know, we have one shot at 2024 and it's nearly time to get started. And so as I do every year, I just want to encourage us again to make this the year that we push into God, that we go for it. Uh, the, the, the key to any relationship working is time and communication. And every single one of us has this sin problem. We fall short and we miss the mark and that separates us from relationship with God. But God wasn't going to going to have that. He, he was going to send his son Jesus to die uh, in our place that God would heal and forgive. But remember, the enemy's greatest tactic is just distracting us. He's distracting us from his love and his presence and his power. So again, one shot of 2024, would we consider making it a priority? Um, for the whole year, but maybe just for tomorrow, if the whole year sounds too much, but make it a priority to elevate my attention towards the kingdom of God, more than the kingdom of the world, and more than the kingdom of me. And so practically, what would living with that kind of priority look like tomorrow or the days after? Maybe it's just asking a few questions as you wake up. Things like, do you know how to find your father in heaven? Like he knows how to find you, but do you know how to find him? Next year, I want to wake up and find him each day before I find Facebook or before I find BBC Sport. I want to find him before I find out whether or not they replied to my direct message or before I get to my email. I want to find my father first. That's a priority. Second priority for me is to feed my soul. My priority is to feed my soul. And so I'm going to be reading the Bible and I'm going to be praying. I might not commit to a big Bible reading plan. I may or I may not, but I want to make it a priority to feed my soul. And a third priority, I want to follow the spirit and fulfill kingdom assignments. You know, it all begins with F, which took me a while, but I'm, I'm happy with that. Anyway, I wanna wake up tomorrow and expect to be part of something miraculous. Expect that God will give me some assignments or some nudges through the day. And I mean, just random ones and small ones like chat to the guy at the checkout or offer to pray for the person in pain in front of me or invite someone to Alpha that's near. 
and hopefully I will already have fed my soul. So if someone needs a word of encouragement, I've got one because I was just reading something earlier that day. Do you know, I'm always shocked and I'm sure you'll be shocked as well. How many times what I was just reading in the Bible is like a word that someone else needs in that moment. It's not just for me, it's for someone else. Anyway, priorities aimed in the right direction. I, I love it if we made this the year we got stuck into the Bible. I love it if we made this the year that we got stuck into community and to bring our encouragements and our questions to small group and to Sundays and learn from each other and be family and community together. I've said a lot. It's New Year's Eve and I just love to pray for us as we begin. So, Father God, I thank you that you're here and wherever we're listening to this, Uh, in whatever room we're in or whether we're out and about, I thank you that your presence is near and in us. And so Holy Spirit, would you come? Even in this moment, just like Mary, would you help us to ponder the good things, the tough things, the things that have happened this last year, help us to ponder with your Holy Spirit. And then help us treasure what you've done. And we're grateful for your mercy and your love and your peace and your power in our lives. And we pray for more. And help us to wake up each day and and find our Heavenly Father, find you. Help us feed our soul this coming year. And help us... Uh, Just fulfill the kingdom assignments, Lord. Help us be full of your Holy Spirit. Would you come even now? And however we're feeling about this new year, Lord, we want it to be one that is centred around you, that is full of your stories. Lord, would you increase your power, Lord? We want to see more life and more miracles and more people coming to know you and and finding out why they were made and and Lord would you release purpose this year would you release hope this year would you release joy this year freedom this year come and so we thank you for for 2023 Lord, the bits we've struggled with, Lord, would you help us process? Would you help us be healed up? And Lord, would you forgive us where we've wandered from you? And then we enter this new year, this blank page with excitement because we go there with you and partnering with you. So come, Lord, thank you for 2024. One last time. Happy Christmas. And look forward to seeing you Bridge House next Sunday and hope you uh, can read our New Year's um, letter and um, get stuck into all the things that we've got coming up in 2024. Thank you for listening. Take care. Bye. Hello, everyone. As we head into 2024, we would love to take some time to pray and to really seek Jesus for all that is to come in this next year. So we've just had a time of celebrating the wonderful Christmas period and we know that one of the names for for Jesus is Emmanuel which means God with us and we just want to remind ourselves that you know that isn't just for Christmas that God is with us as we go forward into the new year in the person of Jesus his son that God is with us all of the time and we can rest in in that promise and in that truth and so with that thought that god is with us going into 2024 we want to offer up these prayers to god jesus i pray that this season however we're feeling whatever we're thinking about in 2024 that we would know that you are with us that you long to enter into every situation that we face, into the mess that we find ourselves in, into the stuff that happens, the ordinary, the mundane, and the really painful stuff. Lord, would we know your goodness and your love, your peace that surpasses all understanding, 
And whatever comes this year, would we have the courage to invite you in to every part of it? I pray for hope. I pray that we would know your deep love. And I pray that we would um, have the courage to seek you for those big life decisions and those small life decisions when we're feeling overwhelmed and uncertain whatever pressures we are facing in family or work, that we would continue to remember that you are with us. And more than that, that you want to come into our lives and bring transformation, that you want us to become all that we're meant to be. And I pray as we start this new year, we would start with the hope that you see us and you know us, and therefore you are for us and you want to be in every part of our lives. And Father God, we, we thank you that we get to follow you, not just ourselves, but in community, in this beautiful thing called the church. And so we pray, Lord, that as we step into 2024, that you would deepen our relationships, that you'd strengthen our connections um, in our church family, and that we would grow together as disciples of Jesus. Lord, would you help us to just keep extending um, radical welcome to those who don't know you yet, to people that we haven't met yet, to, to our friends, our co-workers, to our family members. Lord, those who, who are far from you at present, we pray that this would be the year when you'd reveal yourself to them in ways that they can understand and that we would see people we know in our own stories making decisions to follow you, Jesus. So Holy Spirit, would you empower us and empower your church as we step into 2024 to do the things that Jesus did for your glory. And I pray, Jesus, that knowing that you are with us and living in us, that we can take you to the darkest places where we go, in our workplaces and in our schools, in our relationships and in our friendships, in... Um, yeah, in all the places that we work and occupy, all the places at home with our family, would we know that we carry you? And because of that, us just being in whatever situation that we're in, we are taking you. So I pray for all of those in whatever work they do, whether it's full-time working at home, caring for um, our loved ones, whatever age they may be, or whatever jobs they do outside of the home would each and every one of us know that your presence goes with us and because of that that environment is changed would we have that mindset always this year and lastly lord we want to offer up the big prayers for the world that is hurting at the moment the world that you love and that you created and that you sent your son to save lord we pray for peace mm. we pray for for peace in areas of conflict and violence and war Lord, we pray for your kingdom to break in, in those areas that your justice and your reconciliation would prevail. And Lord, we pray that we can join together with the global church, all of those who profess you as Lord and Saviour, that we can cry out together to pray for God's kingdom to come on earth and your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, Jesus, we want to know your the reality of knowing you this year, the reality of your presence and the reality that knowing you can bring change here and now. And so we pray for peace in our own situations and pray for peace around the world. I pray for the political leaders of every nation. I pray the decisions that the corporate leaders make in business um, that affect our climate and affect those living in poverty. We pray, as Graham said, for justice. Help us to know our part, that each and every one of us, however we feel, has a part to play in your kingdom, in bringing your justice and your goodness and your love. And so I pray that we would, in our small part of where we live, see your kingdom come and your will be done. And that would model to others what your great love looks like. Yeah, and Lord, 
we pray these things with confidence and faith in the good and loving God that you are. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Guys, we hope that you all have a good and blessed 2024. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye. God of all abundance Lay down in the straw Now possessing nothing He is home among of God made flesh here to turn the world around he's come everything changes now the shepherds with their pie First to kneel in awe God who turns the tables He is close among the poor Draw near We are on of God made flesh here to turn the world around he's come everything changes now God of all compassion have called us yours we'll serve you where we find you you are found among the poor draw near we are on of God made flesh here to turn the world around he's come everything changes now 